Welcome back into the Five Star Sit Down here on Sports 360 AZ. I'm Devin Henry alongside Jordan Ham, and it's a big, kind of busy day. There's things changing by the minute. Slightly busy, yeah. Had some news here in the past 24, 48 hours or so. So we want to go over some of these big commitments and some of the final ink to paper kind of moments that we've mm -hmm. had here. Of course, there's still plenty of time for other recruits to make their commitment as the weeks continue to move on. But for now, we got some of the big names in the state have signed, they're sold, and they're going to where they're going to be heading to when they play football next fall. We'll start things off. Kyle Patterson, this has been a big one, Jordan. Yeah, Kyle Patterson, one of the hottest recruits post uh, December 1st. Uh, he had picked up offers from Alabama, from uh, Washington, from UCLA. I was also hearing that there are other SEC and Big 12 programs looking at him, but he went Air Force. And uh, I was able to sit down with him. We're going to, uh, you know, show that conversation here in a second. But um, the, the thing that really stuck out to him was that uh, this is a 40-year decision, not a four-year decision. And uh, I covered Stanford for a couple of years. You heard that a lot. But it really is true for a guy like Patterson, who is uh, highly academic, very focused. That was the one thing talking to Coach Preston Jones was, uh, you know, he was just focused on being successful, whether that was on the field, um, elsewhere. Air Force has also kind of loosened up a little bit. Um, their guidelines where they uh, now have uh, guys that can pursue the NFL straight out of college. Um, so that's an option for Patterson. And uh, Coach Jones said that he believes he has the body type that he could be playing on Sundays if things go right for him over the next couple of years. Um, but I think uh, for the people that aren't really, uh, don't really know Kyle that well um, and don't know the, the type of person that he is, you look at that offer sheet, it might be a little confusing um, when you have two teams that are uh, perennially in the college football playoff and he decides to go Air Force. But once you sit down and really talk to him, it makes perfect sense. Um, I think this is a really good f move for him. And Air Force has just absolutely killed it in the state this past year. Yeah, as we mentioned, Air Force has done a lot in the state this year and mm -hmm. even before that as well. They've really put a stamp here on the state of Arizona. Another big name, Matthew Polamau. Uh, Matthew Poland Mal commits to uh, Kansas State, uh, and this is one where he had, you know, and this is kind of, I think, especially today, it's kind of a theme of like, there's no one right way to navigate your recruitment, um, and everybody's path is different. And Matthew, uh, I remember freshman and sophomore year at Mountain Point being like, this guy's going to be a world beater over the next couple of years. Uh, you know, for Mountain Point, he ends up transferring to Chandler. But his junior season, he's out for the entire year, sits out half the year uh, for Chandler so he can transfer over um, and be eligible. Um, and he just had to battle a lot of injuries. And I think, um, you know, there were times where his recruitment slowed down. Kansas State came in late, um, and they seem to be wanting to have more of a presence in the Valley as well. Uh, but this is a guy that, um, you know, if he's fully healthy, you can stick him right in the middle of that defensive line, and he's going to clog up holes um, and make life difficult. And if there's one thing we know about the Big 12, it's offenses put up huge numbers. <laughs> so you need guys up in the line to kind of control that tempo. I think that Matthew can develop into that sort of player. K-State picking up a big one. Now, I love this story. Des Melton on Deer Valley, a team really tough on their luck this year, moving mm -hmm. down to the 4A conference. Mm -hmm. Team that didn't get a lot of notoriety or anything, but this is one of those cases where you have someone who goes to one of these high schools for four years, not a big name high school, but sticks it out all four years, proves his worth. He got a big deal to go to Louisville, a big D1 school. Yeah, a, a good get for Louisville, and he's a guy that played running back, played wide receiver. Um, played almost at time, anything. At, pl at times played quarterback. Uh, you know, I think you could throw him on the other side of the football and he could be a pretty darn good linebacker or safety, depending on how big he gets. Um, uh, Jason Jewell said that he thinks he's going to be a tight end type, tight end H-back, um, and that's going to be a matchup issue. Uh, I, it, it just is. So um, hopefully he can develop um, and, you know, have – Having that decision to stick with one position, I think, can only help his development. But his versatility um, is just so impressive. Um, and he's going to be signing later today. I'm actually going to be over at that um, as he puts pen to paper officially uh, with Louisville. My favorite thing about college sports is trick plays. Maybe a guy you can do that with. I, yeah, <laughs> get, get the ball in his hands, and usually good things are going to happen. So. Potentially. Now we're going to move on over to Idaho. Not the biggest name in the world, but grabbed a couple of big names here in Arizona, Caleb Covington, and also the Han Twins. Yeah, a really good 24-hour streak uh, for uh, the Vandals, and they've done a good job 
just really uh, recruiting Arizona the past couple of years. You think of Roshan Johnson uh, from Desert Edge a couple of years ago. Seems like they get the guys that just are able to fill up the stats, have nice careers uh, at the high school level, but just may not be the most recruited guys. Um, they add on to a group that had Sully Shannon, um, uh, yeah, Sully Shannon from Brophy, um, Desau Puffer um, from Chandler, the wide receiver, as well as da David Eppinger, the cornerback uh, from Chandler. Um, so another really strong class uh, for the Vandals, and they cap it off with um, a couple of really versatile playmakers. I love what Covington, Covington can do. Um, again, you put the ball in his hands, good things happen. I've watched him put guys on ice skates so often uh, this past year specifically uh, when he was, uh, and he's a guy that played a little bit of running back, played wide receiver as well. Um, depending on what Dana Zubke and that offense needed, they were able to kind of adjust accordingly to him. And right now you are legitimately just like scrolling all the way through Twitter. You're, yep, we got big stuff's happening. We today. got we got TweetDeck open <laughs> right now. A lot of stuff going on, and you never really know what's going to happen. So yeah, I'm, I'm keeping that open. Definitely keeping one eye on that as we discuss uh, the various uh, storylines throughout the day. So we'll go one more student athlete here before we talk a little bit more broader. Marquis Johnson going to Sacramento State. What a great story. Uh, Marquis Johnson uh, moved from Philadelphia um, with his dad. I was actually at Saguaro's uh, signing uh, event earlier today, and um, you know when he was addressing the crowd, he said, "Dad, if it weren't for you, I'd probably be in jail or dead." So you know the what they came from. They they had to overcome a lot. They come to Arizona, spent a couple of years at Chaparral. He was lightning in a bottle for them. Uh, wanted to transfer to Saguaro. Thought that could re uh, help his recruiting. Um, the AIA came in. Uh, there was some prior uh, contact allegations uh, going on because a coach from Chaparral had moved over to Saguaro. So he was essentially going to be ineligible uh, for the entire year. So uh, they were hoping that despite him not really being able to take the field, his recruitment could still kind of happen they were able to through various appeals get him on the field the last couple of games uh, he was at uh, Jason Mon said he was a huge factor for them at, in their state title run um, so he was able to find the field he commits to Sacramento State um, and again just uh, this is a guy uh, him and his father have overcome a lot it's great to see him um, you know go get his education paid for um, and definitely take advantage of the next couple of years over at Sacramento State now those are just a few of the big names obviously there's so much more here in the state totally yeah. I mean if we could have five hour show we might be able to go through all of them maybe, I, maybe at that point maybe yeah but for now we're gonna leave it right there of course five star sit down we won't go away forever don't worry we still got plenty to talk about mm -hmm. here and also on az audibles brad says my football az which we're talking high school but for now we're gonna move to the colleges here located in the state of arizona yep i'm thinking we'll start north and we'll, we'll, we'll work our way down okay. south <laughs> sounds good because we had a lot of talking with nau these past few weeks we did and a lot of the haul that they're bringing in both locally and abroad yeah, and they, um, you know, we've discussed this quite a bit. Um, it's really tough to recruit when you don't have a coaching staff of the future in place. And we knew that Jerome Sowers, uh, he may retire, he may not. There's plenty of uncertainty. Makes it really hard for the, uh, the guys like Robin Flugrad, like Aaron Flugrad, to recruit. Um, once that decision was made and Chris Ball came in from Memphis, one, a very good recruiter, um, but two, you have a figurehead in there that's running the show, uh, that's going to be a stable coach for quite a while. Uh, we saw those results come through and come through uh, very well, especially on the uh, in-state. You have Hendricks Johnson um, that committed. You have uh, Terrell Hayward. You have um, Rashid Sterling, who was an early one. Uh, Caden Weschler, uh, Noah Barta. I know I'm missing a couple of uh, here. Uh, Eli Quete, the uh, defensive tackle from Central. These are the guys that we're talking about that just filled up the stat sheet. Uh, super accomplished high school guys, but for whatever reason, uh, you know, maybe the big time D1 schools didn't love a certain aspect of their game or they were just overlooked because there's a lot of good talent out here. Um, but I have a feeling that they nabbed a couple of guys that uh, the Power 5 schools are going to regret they didn't go after, um, especially as they came on strong late. So heck of a job by um, the flu grads uh, to help kind of keep that ship together as, uh, you know, they got Chris Ball in place and they hit the ground running. I'm excited to see what they do now in these future classes now that they have kind of a full recruiting cycle to work with. So now we'll move down to Tempe, Arizona State. We haven't talked a lot, U of A, ASU, in this most recent letter mm -hmm. of intent day, but nonetheless, of course, everyone knows the quarterback story, but there's plenty yes. more going on in Arizona State. Yeah, and uh, 
it's going to be a pretty quiet day, I think, for the Pac-12 schools. Um, you know, based on what I've read for U of A, it's going to be they may pick up one or two guys, maybe. Um, but it looks like the remaining areas that they're going to fill is through grad transfer. Um, that's going to happen a little bit later um, in the process. And then there are a couple guys um, that uh, ASU is looking at, hoping to nab um, a running back from Southern California, Jordan Wilmore. Um, it, I believe it's down to USC and Utah for them. Um, and then uh, there's also a couple of uh, defensive ends, linebackers that they're looking at in the southeast part of the country, specifically in Georgia, um, that they certainly could add. I think they would welcome that because they, um, you know, seeing the transfers that happened uh, that just departed along the defensive line and that front seven, I think they could use some depth there. They had the the issue is uh, for that with ASU is it's tough to recruit linebackers when you have three freshman linebackers starting. Uh, you know, finding time in that rotation. Uh, is going to be tough, but they can certainly address that depth. Um, but I feel like most of the work has already been done for ASU and U of A in that early signing day. And I think kind of across the country, I think uh, when you look at the power fives, I think I'd probably say about 80% of the guys have already signed and made up their minds. And um, so it's really now kind of, um, you know, it's either icing on the cake or it's continuing to try to fill the gaps where you see some, some cracks in your uh, recruiting class. So we talked some D1 for NCAA. I do want to talk a little bit about, about NAIA, though, because yep. two very, very local schools are trying to not only build more of a local presence, but they're also going to be like a half hour away from each other now. Arizona Christian and Ottawa. Looking at ACU, they might have their quarterback of the future coming from Ferrado and Maverick Gomez. Last mm -hmm. year, they also picked up a great offensive guy, Greg Tremble, from Liberty. And now, in my opinion, this is a great pickup here from uh, Cactus High School, Zach Colop. The dude is a playmaker. You want to throw a jump ball to him. It's not a 50-50 ball. It's like a 70-30 <laughs> most of the time. Um, I watched him um, with I, I would have loved to see him two years with uh, Joseph Ortiz's offense that was all about let's throw it down the field. Let's get big chunk plays. Oh, yes. um, but we saw it with one year and it was very impressive. Um, this is a big bodied kid um, that like I said, you throw it in traffic, you throw a jump ball, he's going to be able to come down with it. I think it's a great get um, for ACU to go ahead and do that. And um, from what we heard last week from Jeff Bowen, uh, this is going to be the biggest recruiting class that they've ever had. Um, and then you also have Ottawa getting great momentum um, as they start their second full season um, on the field, at least. Um, but they're both continuing to recruit very well. Um, there's plenty of uncertainty with the JUCOs. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think that that could be another option uh, for um, both of these programs and, and guys to look at these programs. Um, but it's pretty telling when you hear uh, both of these head coaches say losing JUCO is a bad move in the state. These are like direct beneficiaries of that, <laughs> and they're, they're saying that this is a bad move. Um, so, but we'll see how the dynamic changes over the past couple of, uh, or next couple of years, because last couple of years, I mean, you go back to when I started with this company, ACU didn't have much of a program. They were just getting started, and Ottawa was just an idea. So a lot can change in a couple of years, but uh, good job by Ottawa and ACU to really get that momentum going and make themselves definitely present on the sidelines. Now both in the Southwestern Athletic Conference, they take each other on every year. Yep. That's going to be a fun rivalry when one is in Glendale and then one is in Surprise. They're literally right there. That's yep. going to be some really fun rivalry games looking into the future for NAIA football in the state, especially if we maybe see Juco go away that might be the premier football game totally of the year if you're not you know wanting to drive down to tempe or tucson yeah absolutely so, looking forward to a lot of big names and a lot of big headlines when the college football season starts with winter ball am i right already started with winter ball <laughs> spring ball is a loose term um but yeah it's it's uh Definitely a year-round deal, um, a as we have seen uh, year after year. Um, and b before we go, I definitely uh, I do want us to make sure that we do have, um, you know, throw to this with Kyle Patterson. I was able to sit down with him um, just a couple of days ago, um, and he was able to uh, trust me with that decision, which I, I always appreciate when a guy, uh, before they announce their commitment, trusts me with that. Uh, but definitely want you guys to get the perspective from Kyle Patterson in his own words why he tro chose the Air Force Academy. It's a 40-year decision, not a four-year decision. That's ultimately why Kyle Patterson, the Perry tight end, committed to the Air Force Academy over other Power 5 programs like Alabama and Washington. But it was ultimately what the Air Force Academy could do for him once he stepped off the field that made him want to pledge to the Falcons. I feel I can do whatever I want 
um, you know, graduating from the Air Force, so many doors are open for you. You put that on your resume and people are fighting for you even before you're out of high school or, I mean, before you're out of college. But, um, yeah, I feel like I can do anything. But uh, civil engineering is what I want to, you know, major in when I'm up there. But you know, the sky's the limit. <laughs> I think that's just Kyle's mindset. I think he's so focused on his future and making a decision that's not necessarily a four or five year plan, but a plan for 60, 70, 80 years down the road, what's going to be best for him. And uh, he's just a real focused kid that uh, thinks that's what's best for him for his, his future, not just for playing football. The offense is very similar to Perry's offense, just with me being either a wing set or hand in the dirt or spread out. Um, a lot of the offense, just watching it with that tight ends coach, watching the film, it really translates my game into what they're doing. He wants to play at a high level athletically, but he also wants to get a great education and be a part of something that the very select and elite group of people from our country get to do. And so I think that uh, he's a total package because he is able to do that. And you're able to get into the academy, man. You're, you're the lead of our country, and that, there's a lot to be proud of of that. And uh, I think Kyle is the epitome of, of what those guys are looking for, and I think he's going gonna to flourish there. Great perspective from Kyle Patterson, and again, just a, a guy that has uh, his focuses on things on the football field, things off the football field, um, and you know, just the the amount of respect that I think Coach Jones had for him, uh, you know, just to say, no matter what he does, he's going to be successful. Like that's that's pretty darn cool. So. Um, Obviously a huge day for a lot of people putting pen to paper. Um, for those that haven't or aren't or, uh, you know, feel like they're overlooked, um, you know, just keep at it. Keep grinding, man. Yeah, keep going. Wh whether it's continuing to play football uh, or whatever sport you do, um, you know, I know this is a football-centric show, but it's, <laughs> it's always, it, it is athletics uh, kind of across the board. Um, keep at it. Um, if you feel like it's time to move on, continue to uh, use that same discipline and motivation uh, with whatever you do. Um, you know, it's a the, there's a lot in life uh, past sports. I know it's tough to to over to or to not look past that, but um, you know, just make sure that this isn't a bad day. Make it make sure it's a it's a day of motivation um, and something that you can continue to grow from. So um, after that, Mr. Rogers moment, uh, we're going <laughs> to go ahead and uh, send it out. Thanks to Nate Polk for jumping on with us on signing day. Uh, this is the five-star sit-down on Sports 360 AZ.